Hello, third, fourth, and fifth graders. Uh, welcome back. Uh, this will be our second project. Um, I hope that you got a chance to look at the video on Sandra Zilberzweig's artwork. Um, hopefully you got a chance to look at the portraits and some of her other work that are going to be our inspiration for the, po the abstract portrait we're gonna create. Okay, this project is for the weeks of November 16th, November 23rd, and November 30th. November 23rd being a short week, and we're actually starting in the middle of November 16th um, because we had a project due on the 17th. Projects for this, for this assignment are due uh, November 30th, um, which is in a few weeks, all right? For our learning goal, students will create an artist-inspired portrait that uses the elements of art to show contrast. Elements of art are lines, shapes, colors, form, value, texture, and space. So you're going to try and find ways to create differences um, in your portrait. So here's an example. And this was one I did with crayon and uh, paint. That's what I'm going to demonstrate today. But you could do the entire thing with crayon, oil pastel. Uh, my students here at school are using some chalks. So you could totally do it with chalk. Chalk would be really fun. Um, but notice that the right and the left side um, have contrast. They do not match. Not only do the lines and the shapes and the colors not match, but even the overall um, style. So um, be thinking about that when you're creating your portrait. You're going to need a plain sheet of paper to start. And you want it to be tall. Um, because it's going to be in portrait orientation, so you want a nice tall paper, all right? And we're going to start with a pencil, and the first thing we're going to do is near the bottom of the page, um, I'm going to draw a chin line. So I'm going to take my pencil about a hand's width from the bottom, I'm going to draw a chin line. It's just like a little U-shape, and this is kind of a zoomed up close-up of the face. You notice I don't see all of the hair or anything. You could probably add hair to yours, but you don't see the entire head. Your head it's like a close-up, okay? Um, on the next, actually I'll show two different versions. I'll show an additional version on the back. So um, on the nose and the eyebrows, there are two options. You could do um, an eyebrow and nose similar to what I did on this paper. I'll show you how to draw that. For that one, what you're going to do is you're going to make kind of a rectangular U-shape in the center of the head and then just arch it on the left and the right side to make an eyebrow like that. Or another option, you can choose which one you want to do, you could make like a widow's peak, sort of like what a, um, an owl sort of has on the top of its head or um, something like that. And then on that, you could add an L-shaped nose. So you could do this style, which is kind of a rectangular nose with the arched eyebrows, or you can do an L-shaped nose. Just for the sake of difference, I'm gonna, I did the U-shaped one this time. So this time, I think I'll stick with the L-shaped nose, okay? The next step is we're going to make eyes. Now we want to make sure the eyes have contrast. So I'm going to show you four different eyes. You can choose one of those or you can make one up on your own. You want the eyes to look different on either side. Um, I'm going to make a regular football shaped eye on this side. And then inside that I'll make an iris and a pupil. So just a regular kind of human eye shape. On this side, I'm going to make the eye look lidded, like it's half closed. I'm gonna show you four versions, so if you wanna wait until I show you all of them and decide what you wanna do. Also, um, I've had people use triangles for eyes, rectangles for eyes, diamond-shaped eyes are kinda of cool, um, so be creative. So I'm gonna make um, the bottom part, and notice that the circle for the iris doesn't completely show because part of it's hidden under, under the lid. And then I'm gonna make a pupil in the center. So now I've got two different eyes. Um, another option I'll show you on the back here is you could do a closed eye 
So maybe you want the eye to be closed on one side, like it's winking, or that it, maybe it's two characters. Maybe you want to have one sleepy character on one side, and maybe the other side of their character is maybe very awake and lively, which would be fine. Um, so on this side, I'm going to try uh, maybe a, uh, maybe an eye that's maybe looking to the side. Let's try. So maybe I want to make this eye look like it's looking away. Something like that. Maybe it's a curious eye, okay? Maybe this side's not curious, okay? So I'm going to um, come back to this side, but you can pause and rewind the video if there's an eye that you particularly like that you want to use. All right, so now um, that I've got these eyes established, I really want to play around with the design around the eyes. Notice that the patterns and designs on this side are very different from this side. So I want to come up with some kind of pattern. I can kind of show you how I did something similar to this. So what I did is I divided this side, kind of made like a circle around the eye here, and then I just made these little shapes around the eye, like this. And then once I did that, I kind of made these little bumps underneath it. I'm gonna work fairly quickly just for the sake of time here. But you take as much time as you need. Actually, I don't like that one there. I think I'll get rid of that one. Okay. On the other side, I kind of did some stripes and some zigzags, so um, I'm going to add another line here. Kind of did this slanted eyebrow thing. I actually think that looks kind of cool. It's kind of different. So I'm going to try and make something like this. Um, and every time I do it, I'll do it a little differently, so I can't say that I can do it exactly the same as I did the last time. Just made these little zigzag lines like that. And then I made some stripes. I made these go the opposite direction. And then... I think for me right now, because this nose is a little different, I might just kind of bring that out and maybe make some lines on the nose. So, a little different than the other one. Okay, now um, the forehead. You want to do something to the forehead. I just made like a medallion kind of thing in the middle here and then added some interesting lines. Um, for this one, I might make like a point and then maybe on this side I'll do kind of like those little zigzaggy lines here so I think I'll add those and on this side I might do some cool wavy lines that looks good you can see that there we go and then um, you can always put something on the cheeks so maybe um, I like I had some students wanted to do sun and moon, um, fire and ice, something like that that has some contrast. Um, over here, you know, you could put a heart. And then over here, I just made some kind of warrior paint, kind of painted lines on this side. Okay. Um, when you get to the mouth, um, I just make a line down the center and then I just made some lips. I had some students that wanted to make one of one side of their mouth go up into a smile and maybe the other one go down into a frown or something or maybe two different expressions of some sort. Um, but I like putting the line above and below the mouth because what that does is it divides the space so that when I use colors later, it's going to be easier to know which color is going where. Okay? I also think I might put a line here. 
this time. I think that looks kind of cool. Almost looks like the, this is the, my portrait's wearing a mask. Um, now near the bottom of the page, um, you have a little bit of space there. I would put a neck or you could put a neck and shoulders. So I'm just going to draw a neck and I don't want to make it too big. And if you want to add a shoulder, you can just kind of slide it out a little bit so that it gets wider near the bottom. And then you want to put some type of pattern. On this one, I just made just a different kind of pattern, uh, some kind of design. Um, but you can choose um, which kind of pattern you want. I know this doesn't totally fit on the page, so um, I might just make sort of like a necklace sort of thing and maybe make some different kinds of patterns. And then maybe just add some lines like that okay that looks pretty good now when you're all done with pencil and you could still be working with pencil right now and that's completely fine um, but when you are done and you can pause like I said pause the video whenever you want and you're just going to sharpie all the lines and notice I already kind of went off my line a little bit but that's okay no one's gonna see my pencil lines when I get done I'm going to sharpie all these lines. You can add as many lines as you want. Try to keep it fairly simple, otherwise it's going to be a lot of detail when you're good to color. I have a little uneven surface here, so my pen's going a little wonky. Okay. If you don't have a Sharpie, that's completely fine unless you plan on painting. Um, if you're going to go over your lines with a non-permanent marker, when you go to paint next to it, your color might bleed. So keep that in mind if you don't have a permanent marker. Um, Sharpie tends to work better for this. You could also use a black crayon because a crayon will resist the paint. So if you are painting, if you're coloring it all with crayon, then you can use any kind of marker. Or if you're using markers, use whatever marker you want. Okay. So I've, now I've used lines and shapes and colors to really create some cool contrast here. I'm, trying, I'm not really too happy with this nose, so I'm kind of changing it up a little bit as I work. I think that looks a little bit better. I kind of like that big, strong black line there, so I'm going to leave that. And then, I think instead of putting these lines here, I'm going to erase them and just make this black. I think that looks cooler. And then I'm tracing these lines here. So I'm going to go ahead and finish sharpieing all of these lines, um, and that will be the end of week one's job. So I want you to go ahead and finish outlining all of your lines with a dark marker or crayon, and then next week get ready for the next part of the video, which will be color. Okay?